I-95.5 FM presents Inside Insurance. Listen now as John Gill teams up with Guardian Group insurance experts to tell you all you need to know about insurance. Here now is Inside Insurance. Good afternoon, Trinidad Bay, and welcome to Inside Insurance. Just about 31 minutes after the hour of 3 o'clock in TNT. And every first and last Friday in every month, we feature this segment called Inside Insurance, brought to you by Guardian Group. Um, and uh, it features Guardian Life and General experts as we discuss different aspects of insurance. And today we'll be talking specifically health insurance, and we have Garden Life expert, uh, Mr. Cal- Calvin, you've been here before. I've been here. Been you've here been before, here right? before. So, um, you know, um, you're always welcome here. Thanks, and um, we look forward to having you. So we are with us, Mr. Calvin Mendez. He is an assistant brand, ma- am I correct? That's assistant right. Assistant brand right. manager at uh, uh, Guardian Life. And today we're talking health insurance. So we'll be... Um, in a while, inviting your calls and so forth. But until then, we have Calvin here to, to explain some of the important aspects of health insurance. So we get into the program right after this. No matter how careful you are, accidents will happen. But with Garden Group's comprehensive range of insurance policies, we can take care of all the things you care for. From your car to your house, to your contents, to fire insurance, and much more. Guardian Group. Live safe. Live easy. All right, and welcome back to Inside Insurance, brought to you by Guardian Group. And uh, as I said to you before, we have with us Guardian Life um, expert, uh, Mr. Calvin Mendez, and um, we today we're talking health insurance and spe- well, specifically, and we have he- Calvin here to deal with a number of the issues that we have on our plate. So we want to kick things off, and um, Calvin, the first question I want to ask you is this: How do I determine which health insurance plan is right for me? Well, you see, John, um, with health insurance, um, any plan is good for you. The thing what you need to look at is to see what amount of coverage mm-hmm. and what the plan actually covers. Now, it's very difficult to compare health insurance plans because all the companies have, the, they have their plans structured in different mm-hmm. ways. Um, so it comes down to what you will need to assess which one actually works better. So in other words, it starts with an assessment of your personal of needs. your personal needs. And, right. and this is where your, your, your financial advisor comes in. Mm-hmm. Where he, I mean, he will sit with you and look at and see exactly. Uh, maybe you have some hereditary diseases uh, right. within your family um, that you might want to cover particularly. Maybe you're more concerned about preventative care. Um, some plans actually cover that. Some they don't. So uh, health insurance is something that you need. That, that should be a, a critical part of, of your financial planning program. Yeah. Now, the um, thing about it is, uh, and I, I like what you said, any, insur- any health insurance is better than none at all because it means that you have something in you place. You have something because, um, I mean, think about, John, the amount of um, charity events you've went through yeah, just yeah, for reason yeah. for medical expenses. That's right. Um, and, and think how much less... Uh, work you'd have to put in if you actually had, had a something. plan that would actually pick up some of those expenses. So let me ask you something. Is it possible to have, based on my needs, to have uh, a health insurance plan basically constructed for my personal needs? Well, from an individual perspective, mm-hmm. um, that is not something the companies tend to like to do because, I mean, insurance companies are about managing risk. Right. And what they'll be doing is looking at you as an individual. Um, from a company perspective, that is something that we tend to look at. We tend to be able to m- suit, design a plan to suit exactly what your employees need as right. well as their affordability mm-hmm. uh, as well. So, so it, again, um, it, it's not, it's not an easy case where you could just walk in and say, well, hey, you know, I want a 
uh, health insurance. You want two pong of this and three pong of that. that time. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want vision. I don't right want that time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Most of the plans are already structured and the companies will just be, be, will give it to you and say, listen, right. this is what it is. This is the cost. For it. And you just have to decide. You have to decide. In terms of what quantum, like how much coverage in each aspect. Yeah, and and that, the coverage, really, mm-hmm. what we're talking about would be like your major medical right. plan. Like, you know, you, you could go as low as, low as 250,000. And, and as high people, as. And as high as a million. Right. Maybe more than that. Now, some people might find 250. That sounds like a lot, but actually it's not. It's not. It's, it's not. not. I mean, I, like I said, there are some procedures. Take, for example, um, ICU. If you are in ICU, that could run you anywhere from 8000 to $10,000 a day. Yeah. And if you have an extended stay, and if you stay there, there goes your 250 stay Right there. Yeah. You stay there two weeks and mm-hmm. then there goes your 250 yeah. So, yeah. All right. But let me ask you this then. Is health insurance... Or rather, are health insurance and critical illness plans the same? Well, yeah, yes and no. Um, with insurance, it all it all comes down to exactly what you're going to use it for. Now, critical illness insurance was designed to help an individual should a critical illness arise. They get a lump sum of cash that would help them with their personal expenses. Meaning like, I mean, the mortgage doesn't stop. The car payments doesn't stop, the school fees doesn't stop, the groceries doesn't stop. Those things, you have to actually still pay those things while you're sick. Right. Uh, the banks are not going to say, okay. Well, well yeah, yeah, so much. Yeah. So, <laughs> right? you know, I mean, forget that. <laughs> forget that. They right. have been. Take, a, take a six months break from your yeah. mortgage, we're not going to take your house. It, 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 it doesn't they don't, work that way. That doesn't work like yeah. So critical illness gives you that injection of cash should a critical illness arise. Um, on the flip side, uh, health insurance will pay your medical bills, right. which is the actual cost for the procedures, the actual cost of the illness, which is um, hospitalization, your medication, and so forth. So it, it will not cover the procedures. The cost of the procedures. It will mm-hmm. not cover your actual personal expenses. But then again, health insurance never covers up to 100%. Exactly. It covers you up to 80%, which means you still have, have to put out your mm-hmm. pocket at 20% which is where the critical illness insurance so you have that lump sum of cash that comes in could actually give you that top up so then it's advisable for most people to have them both yes 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 it is yes it is all right how is health insurance well rather no um yeah how is health insurance different from disability insurance well disability insurance um i mean we have we hear, like, let's take road, road fatality, for example. We only hear about the fatalities. Yeah, right? there, yeah. there are probably three times as more disability or people losing limbs or loss of limbs, which, or, which makes or you disabled. Or loss of function. Or, yeah. or loss of function, mm-hmm. eyes, ears, those kind of things. Um, so with this, that in itself, while your health insurance will pay again for the medical bills, to, I mean, to treat you and treat those disabilities, Again, if you're disabled, you cannot work. And you don't know exactly how long your employer will continue to pay right. you for. Yeah. So if your employer decides, well, okay, after one month, two months, they might pay your salary. After the third month, the employer may say, and everybody needs to ask themselves that, mm-hmm. how long will my employer pay me in the, event I, of a disability. in the event of a disability? And it comes down again to your personal expenses. What do you do? Where does mm-hmm. the money come from? And disability insurance, what that does, it, it kind of replaces your monthly income. Right? During, so the, when, during the period during of disability. During the period of disability. So and if, if it's a permanent disability. Well, if it's permanent disability, that's where critical illness actually kicks in. Critical illness will pay. They, they actually cover it. covers so, only, so crit- only it, permanent disability. So, so is it that... Um, Disability insurance only covers temporary disability? Yes, All that's right. right. Now, okay. now, you have to remember, permanent disability means that you cannot do anything. anything. You cannot, yeah. There's no form of employment you can do. That's what permanent disability yeah. means. So a lot yeah. of people say, not that you cannot function in the capacity of your current job. It means a doctor must say, a physician must say that you cannot work that, that, anywhere that, that, that your 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 earning ability has been this to- has been totally, totally de- de- disseminated yeah. yes that's right all right good that's clear enough um what is the difference between a deductible and copayment your deductible on the health insurance to make it as simple as possible um everybody understands car insurance it's like your excess on your car insurance it's the portion of the claim that you are responsible, responsible for, for. 
and that tends to be a very um, small figure uh, in some cases it's like 250 dollars a year 300 dollars a year at the high end maybe 500 dollars mm-hmm. a year right so you send in a claim for a thousand dollars um the first 250 would be your responsibility yes. so and then really the, yeah, the, the, the insurance will only cover you up to seven hundred fifty. up to 750 yeah. dollars but the thing about with the doc the, with deductibles you only paid once a year so you pay a deductible in january you don't have any deductibles to, to pay, pay for the rest, for of, the the rest of the year okay but that's good news and what is therefore all right so and the question was how is that different from well, co-payment, co-payment. Yeah. right co-payment most health plans covers you cover you for 20 um 80 percent 20 percent meaning the insurance company pay 80 percent you're responsible for 20 percent so your co-payment so it's, it's like i said it never covers 100 percent. so your percentage is what is the co-payment, co-payment. yeah so if it's 20 some plans actually go as high and that they will pay up to 90 percent and your co-payment will be 20 percent of the, the cost of the right. procedure yeah all right fantastic mm-hmm. Um, will my health insurance plan cover medical expenses if I get sick, injured, become hospitalized while abroad? Or do I need to purchase travel insurance beforehand for that purpose? Well, again, it comes down to the type of plan you have. Now, travel insurance tend to be, it tends to cover you for things like loss of luggage, accidents and so forth right now it doesn't really cover medical medical to some extent now uh, some plans cover you they extend their coverage to the u.s for example and and i represent guardian group i must say our plans will extend coverage to the u.s and canada so only in, u.s and canada only not u.s Europe. and canada you, you mm-hmm. see what, what you try to do is you you because you have to look at the management of how um, medical expenses are you can actually predict or you have a network of hospitals in the u.s and canada that you will say okay if john something happens to john gill and he goes to st john's we know that for this procedure the the cost will be that it's a little difficult to do that in europe so we can't really extend that to, to Europe and a lot of and most insurance companies that's what they do they tend to leave it to the leave US, it, and Canada. US and Canada so yes you will be covered uh, in particular our plans once you have your card there is a number in the back of a, a 800 number toll free that you call and you get one of the main the main main thing you get is hospital admission admission, admission. guarantee yeah. uh, you know it, it is rumored but it's not always the case that well, if you don't have insurance they don't touch you yeah. in the US um, some hospitals do that, some, some they don't turn you away. But it's, it's better to have it than... <laughs> yeah, always better to have it than not to have it. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, okay, Calvin, we, we want to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to open up the phone lines. I'm certain that there are uh, listeners out there who have additional questions. So, um, just to let you know, we're talking with Guardian Life expert, uh, Mr. Calvin Mendez. And this is the program, Inside Insurance, brought to you with the kind compliments of Guardian Group. Careful you are, accidents will happen. But with Garden Group's comprehensive range of insurance policies, we can take care of all the things you care for. From your car to your house, to your contents, to fire insurance, and much more. Garden Group, live safe, live easy. Fifteen minutes before the hour, four o'clock, and we inside Inside Insurance here on 995.5 FM. Brought to you the kind compliments of Guardian Group. And we're talking with Guardian Life Expert, Mr. Calvin Mendez, and we're talking health insurance. In particular, we're going to open up the lines in just a, a few, a uh, couple of minutes to invite you in with your questions. But I have, I have a, f- a final question for you, Calvin. And how can I afford health insurance? Are there payment options? Um, from an individual standpoint, um, you're only allowed biannually and annually to pay individual insurance. Mm-hmm. From a company or group perspective, then it's done monthly, which is deductions through your employer. So can you afford it? Again, it all depends on your, it depends on your level of affordability, but your options are only as an individual, semi-annually or annually Mm -hmm. or if you're with your employer as a lot of people are uh, it's monthly 
okay. that comes that comes directly out of your salary, which the employer actually picks up half the cost. Half the cost. Actually, That's we're right. seeing a change in that. It actually goes to like two thirds, one third now. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna open up the phone line six two two three nine three seven is the number. We're talking with uh, Mr. Calvin Mendez, Garden Life Expert, and the topic today is health insurance. Hello. Good afternoon. Welcome. Good afternoon to the panel. Afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Yes, um, I have a question. Um, I have an insurance, um, health insurance. With, um, Don't call the company. Just say you have health insurance and just... Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. A personal health insurance. Right. And the company that I'm working for has a compulsory health insurance that every employee... Um, fast to, to, to have so right now i'm paying for both insurance but but, but i cannot use both of them right and both of them is, is, is for, for my family so so what, what is the um first, first to begin with is that legal I, 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 yeah. and the second thing is um what, what could i do uh, because I can't use both. Because when you are claiming, they say you can only claim one. But that's not so quite true, though. That, that is not. That that's is not, not totally true. true. Yeah, but listen true. to Calvin's yeah. explanation. Right. Yes. Yeah, it, it comes down again to the two the two plans that you have. Um, if the major medicals on both plans are the same, um, which is I highly doubt it. Doubt it. Yeah. Um, because there are no unless you have two Garden Life plan or two other mm. insurance companies plan, then you would see there would be f- these benefits will be identical. Right. Mm-hmm. Other than that, it's highly unlikely that uh, that two health plans would have mm-hmm. the same benefits. So if you, for example, your company plan, which is compulsory, and, and that is not illegal, by the way, that is just the company policies yeah. and procedure, right. and, and, and they are entitled to, to do and that. And actually, it's a, it's a benefit. It is a benefit. It is a benefit. And, and they are actually paying, paying part of, part of, of it, the, cost. Uh, the yeah. cost as well, which is how it works. And uh, like I said, the, the, the shift has been changing. It's no longer 50-50. Company pays two to the staff pay one, one third. third yeah. um, some companies actually pay all of, all it. of it. Yeah, depending right. on where you are in the company. Yeah. Right? Um, mm-hmm. Companies are switching to that. So um, your company plan may be $200,000 and your individual plan and maybe 300 so or, that, vice versa. That, or, or vice versa so yeah. what you can do is you pay you claim on the maximum on the lower plan what you can get on that one and then the balance you can now claim on the, on other, the other plan, plan. so y- yeah. yes you can pay you can uh, and in some cases um when we calculate it we say it can't be done but in some cases when you have two plans like that you can actually get back well, almost 100 yes, right. almost yeah. so so it's in your f- your interest and your family interest to actually have, have them both have them both yeah. but if one if one actually gives you more benefit than the other let's say the company and it's costing you less um from a financial advisory um, standpoint then that's the one you, you might want to stick with but then also there are some plans that are not portable so your employer's plan even though they mandate that you are you are on it if you leave the company you can't you take, can't it, take with it with you so you need to keep your you need to keep your individual yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. so. All right, six two two three nine three seven is the number to call if you have questions for Calvin on health insurance. This is Inside Insurance, and we're talking health insurance this afternoon. Is brought to you the kind compliments of Guardian Group, and um, you know, and I'm glad he called a call and asked that question because there are a number of people that have that issue. Yes, if they have both. an individual plan and and they have a company plan, for example, if you've had an individual plan for a while and you you, you didn't work with a company that had a group plan, then you you start working with a company with a group plan. You know, some people might decide, you know what, I could give up my individual. But that is not always a good that idea. That is not always a good idea. Yeah. Now, if, if the if the plan of the company has the conversion option, or should I say the portable option, mm-hmm. um, which means that when you leave, leave you can you take just, it with you. You take it yeah. with you, you just sign a form. And you pay the total premium yourself. And you pay yourself. the total premium yeah. yourself, then you stick with the company plan. Mm-hmm. But what you don't want is that you, you already have coverage and the coverage on the individual plan. And then if you leave the company, it's, it's, not, dark, portable, it's not portable and plan. you have to go and apply. Yeah. And I mean, God alone knows what might happen to you and what you might claim for before. And then you don't qualify anymore. Right. That's right. Because when you go back to apply, you apply as a, as a, I, as a new person. A new person. Yeah. Correct. So, so you need to look at all those, take all those things into consideration, into consideration. before you actually yeah. end it or any insurance program, actually. Yeah. So. Um, now, health insurance, as you said earlier, has become even more important in today's world eh? because of 
just I mean when you look at the predominance of, of, of um, lifestyle diseases and so forth it is almost no, not almost it is, it is definite that you must own health insurance good afternoon welcome hello uh, yes I'm, yes I'm, I'm calling that because right. I didn't I, I don't find the answer was, uh, was so good probably all because right. I didn't explain <laughs> okay. myself all properly. right so all let, right. let's hear the uh, question uh, again let's, let's try it again then <laughs> yeah yeah so um, my plan but both of them is company plan my, my my wife is not really have a personal plan my wife oh and okay she that has changes a it. plan <laughs> that, that so, so and then my company well, well which is government and you all work my, for, my right. union negotiated right and i'm uh, with that plan but money is coming out of my salary without my approval right and for 10 years without I your with, oh, hold on without your without your approval i am kind of lost on that yeah yes yeah, that's all my approval that plan was the workers had no say it was the, a negotiation between the, the the union and the well, well i don't know the, the union well, and your employer are, uh, are yes, yeah. uh, and, the, and the government well well and, it, would, um, it would be understood that the union would yeah, the union you know, would be your representative you know, you, know, you know the thing about it though is mm-hmm. therefore it's group insurance yes, yes. Pardon? it's group insurance the plan that you are on that was negotiated it has to have been it, group it insurance. Group insurance. insurance it is group insurance yeah, yeah so that means it, 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 the it, cost it, it, to it, it, you so that means the cost to you is a lot less than if you try to get it individually on an individual basis that's the first yeah, thing but, but, but the, the, the plan that my wife has the whole family in mm-hmm. is similar all right, right? have and you have you looked that and it's a better plan actually mm-hmm. more benefit right right and we don't claim much so, so, so not to say we claim you know, the limit. So the past mm-hmm. ten years that I have that both plan, I only use one. So I'm paying for my plan, and I never use it. Why? I never made but a claim because, on it for but, ten years. All right, but, but why? Well, let me ask you a question. Why haven't you? You should. No, because no, because when when I got a claim, mm-hmm. right, they, they, they say that you could, they they could only pull out one form for one company. Yes, right? and, and they are correct. But the point is this. Um, if you claim on your plan, the other plan is your wife's plan. Your wife could then claim on your behalf. On your behalf. Well, and, eh? and, but on uh, just to add to that, mm-hmm. John. No, I don't. The well, way, well, the that's way that not it, what they say. So I don't know. That's what I wanted to get. But yeah, I, well, well, here, so we here, claim on both, both of them. All okay, right, hold on a minute. This Listen. is this is how it works, right? Um, uh, in, in insurance, it is deemed that the, the husband is the head of the household, right? Right. So what what tends to to happen when you come when if you have a claim, let's say your wife has a claim and she informed her insurance company that she has insurance, that you have a plan and she's on your plan, um, it doesn't matter who the insurance company is, they will forward the claim to the husband's plan. They will do that. So they will pay under the husband's plan first to the maximum there. So even if her plan is better, you claim under his plan first and then the balance you can now claim under so he can't so let's say i let's put me in that situation and i have that plan that was negotiated and which i pay for if something happens can't i claim on my plan first as an yes you can claim so i have claimed on my plan and let's say i've I've received but it is an inferior benefit to my wife's plan you can claim the balance on her plan then my wife can Correct. Can do it, Correct. yeah, Correct. and so that's the thing. What he's a little bit confused about. So it is possible to to want now if the benefits are the same. However, then there is no. I, I'm very familiar with the plan that he is talking about. talking to, and the benefits are. He he is right. He said it's a her plan is is a superior, a superior plan, plan, which means yeah. her plan is probably placed directly with a, with a company. Yeah, company yeah. Right. So I, I am quite familiar with, with, the, the, with the two products. So I am sure I. I I, I believe him when he says that his plan, his white plan, is superior. Right, but but his but, premium, mm-hmm. I am also very familiar. Is also I'm sure significantly cheaper than her than premium. premium. Yeah, but also to again the, the reality is he can claim on his he plan. He can claim if, on his plan. And whatever, let's if he says inferior, he can then claim the balance That's from right. his wife's insurance. Correct, because yeah. his plan is not it, what I know. Is, his plan is not with a it's not with a actual insurance company. All right. <laughs> Good afternoon. Welcome. Yes, good afternoon, John. Good afternoon. Uh, I, I, um, listen to the last guy, and I, I have a similar situation mm-hmm. in that 
my situation is that I, I have insurance um, through my wife. Mm-hmm. I, but I also have, well, her plan is a, a group plan, right. right? But I also have a personal plan, right? And, and I, I think in this case, I A plan that you purchased yourself? Yes, I purchased An individual it. plan, right, yes. Yes. So, I think in, in my case now, I want to blame the, 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 um, the agent, right, who initially signed me up and tell me if I'm wrong here. I, I claimed 90% um, through my wife's insurance, right? Mm-hmm. They say 90%, right? right? So, I had, let's say, okay, I, I was going to claim 10%, right? Or claim the balance, I should say, um, with my personal insurance, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. When I went there, I was told I cannot do so, only to find out that the coverage that I have, right, is only, I can only get reimbursement on... Uh, Accident and emergency, right? Well, all right. Because but what? Well, what you have is an accident. Is an accident plan. Is an accident, is an accident and emergency, and emergency plan? plan. Is, it a, is it a comprehensive? Is right. It? But what, what I'm saying, and here's the reason why I said I would bleed my agent. Right. The, the, the person initially signed me up because on on doing this, all they told me is that okay, you can you can claim reimbursement. Mm-hmm. Right, and you can claim the balance if you claim in one insurance. You can claim the balance there, mm-hmm. you know. But I mean, I was, I was, I mean, me who didn't have much experience about insurance, you know, I was never looking at it as okay. I will only be able to claim, you know, for um on accident, an accident, an emergency. Emergency, emergency situation. Yeah. yeah. So I, I believe that you know, agents should have. You know, they should be responsible enough to really explain the details. I, and I agree of, with you. I agree with I you a hundred percent. But let me just add this as well. It is also your respons- responsibility to read your policy document. Yeah, I, I, I mean, and I'm not faulting, and I'm, I'm not saying that probably the agent may not have been at fault, eh? but it's also your responsibility to read your policy document. And, and that is some I'm advice. Right? That is some advice I, I, I would give everybody. All right. Thank you very much for your call. All right. All right. I, I would give that advice to everybody, John. Yeah. You, you need to read your contract. A lot of people buy insurance and they don't read the contract. They well, just bring it back and they don't read not it. Only, not only insurance. Yeah, They're not going to into the contract and they don't read they don't the contract. Really contracts anyway. yeah. Now, you need to look at I mean, what you're buying. Are you buying a, a, a health plan or are you buying an accident plan? Because the, the, there's, a, there's a big difference between the two. So everybody needs to at least. I mean, yes, there there are people that give you bad advice. Uh, we we cannot. I will not sit yeah. here and say that that doesn't happen. But yes, you do but get bad advice. But I mean, it comes on to you as well. You know, we you have your, to take some responsibility. You as know, well. and yeah. and the previous caller made a comment earlier that said that um you know he's never claimed any plan for ten years and in, in and that's front, unfortunate. He that's should. unfortunate. Yeah. You know, but in, you have to think about when you do have a claim, it's there. Yeah. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. Right, yeah, I am. Um, I call in concerning a similar problem that is these last right, you, need, you, you need to be very quick because we're almost out of time. Yeah, okay. Um, concerning the claiming for any benefit, you're supposed to provide um, a receipt for your payment. Right? And you can only, you can only get a, um, an the original receipt, receipt and you can only produce that one. They can only claim once as far as um, I know. If I have two insurance, the same government insurance and other private one, I just close the private one because I have the same problem. All right. Okay. I, 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 I don't think... Well, well there, there's something... You, okay, when you do the first claim, right, you get what they call um, a EOB, which is uh, Explanation of Benefits. That is what you use with copies of your... And actually, most insurance companies, once we have on file, that's why one of the questions is, do you have insurance elsewhere? Once we have on file that you do have insurance elsewhere, we tend to forward the, the claim to the other insurance company. Mm-hmm. Or we give you the EOB, and you can now take that to your insurer. Um, of course, if the first policy covers um, claim, you, you claimed, let's say, on the higher level, you actually get more on the first policy. Uh, you do really, if you get 90% on one and your plan covers you 80, they will not go to 100. They will they will go up to the 90. Yeah. As well. yeah. All right, so Calvin... Um I think we had a pretty good afternoon, as usual. I think so. Yeah, yeah and we will answer some of the questions and concerns of the callers. And um, so once again, I'd like to say thank you to you, Calvin. Mr. Calvin Mendez. Hey, and, thanks, John. Yeah. And you've been listening to Inside Insurance, brought to you with the kind compliments of Guardian Group. We'll be back next week with more Inside Insurance.